that's it. It's like, and uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, um, so speaking of that, but, Shane, let's get to the let's get to the World Series of Poker. You recently had a beef online with uh, Ty, one of the World Series of Poker. Uh, I think you guys cleared this up. Don't get mad at me, Bicycle Casino. I think you guys sort of cleared this up, but I mean, you had a you had a pretty big beef going for a second with the World Series of Poker. What was that all about, and what do you see as the as the problems with the current World Series of Poker? You know what? I mean, look, I ranted to Ty Stewart, and I, <laughs> I went for it, and I wasn't really, like, offended. It was just, like, a combination of, like, frustrations that I took out on him. Um, but, and... And I actually even don't, I didn't mind the joke and like, I don't mind the sense of humor. What frustrates me a little bit about him um, with how he communicates on Twitter is that, I, you know, it's, it's his own floral language style. And I don't necessarily have a good way of communicating with that or understanding that. Right. And I just want to, and like, I, you know, I think if I have DM'd him before um, to say like, yeah, I look, I care about the World Series. I would be willing to like be on a player advisory committee. And in reality, I would be a terrible fit. Like, you know, you can't put a crackhead on a uh, you know, corporate uh, <laughs> advisory board. And, okay. And, you know, like, in other words, my countercultural leanings are well known. And uh, whatever. But the point is, I do care enough to actually just, like, you know, like, this was a year or two ago that I said that, uh, you know, it's just like, look, I, he gracefully said, it's, you know, it's complicated. But the point is, I actually have some affection for the World Series as an institution. Um, and I, my feeling is this is like top down, like wherever this like pressure is coming in has created an unfriendly ground level atmosphere for the players. Um, where it's just like, we just don't feel it. It's like, gosh, it's like, I'm not nostalgic for the time when they would give you free rooms, which they maybe should, or like the times you could like, like, you know, get, a, I don't fucking know, a, a cocktail waitress in, in a timely manner. I like, I don't know. It's just like it's an overall service vibe, and it's like uh, but, uh, Shane. Shane, it, let me ask you this. Let me. I, I'll play devil's advocate for a second. And this, and I'm not. I'm not taking the side of the World Series of Poker because I don't give a shit. But I mean, what I'm saying is, poker tournaments. I think a lot of people who play poker tournaments think that it's a big deal. But as far as the casinos care, poker tournaments are fucking nothing. They're nothing. They're lost leader. I mean, why should they like dump time and money into lost leader? That that can't be. I mean, look, uh, Harris acquired Binions in, in no small part for this World Series brand. So what you say might be saying is right, but obviously fucking making money on that World Series and it's a huge brand and it's like a huge history and the, like so. And I, you know what? Okay, is it a lost leader when you're bringing thousands of tens of thousands of players, their families, their wives, and friends in the town? And, well, no, the, the people who come to town and gamble, the people who gamble aren't, that, that's, the, the tournament is the last leader. The bringing of the people into town to gamble, that's the whole point. They want them in the pits. That's what I, I assume they want them in the pits. Or the shop, whatever. You're not suggesting they lose money on the World Series of Poker. I think that the Are World you? Series of Poker might be the only tournament series in the world that actually does make money because of their deal with the SPN and the sponsorships. Most tournament series, from the LA Poker Classic to the Legends to the fucking all the way down the line, they don't make money off of the tournament series. They make money off of people going to the cash games and people going to the table games. I find that surprising. I find I would find it surprising if the EPT is not a profitable venture between... Mm -hmm. You know, or the WPT, I don't know. I guess Dude, the WPT, like, Shane, the WPT just got bought by a Chinese company for $35 million. $35 million yeah. is basically one penny. I mean, a, a, a casino like the bike, $35 million they can afford. I mean, and the bike is one casino in a, in a giant... So, you, so wait, so wait, the bike doesn't make money when they run a World Series circuit? I, I, they don't I, make money on that exact event. They're I'm going to tell... They don't, no. And, and I mean, okay. and I had, I had, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the head of the, the WS WPT tournament director. What's his name? Um, uh, a poker mentor. What's his name? Ty Stewart. Uh, or something like that. No, no. The guy who runs the WPT yeah. and, and, and oh, uh, sh shooting Barack stars. Barack Obama. Shooting. He runs oh, shooting. Matt Savage? I had Matt Savage on and Matt Savage basically confirmed that he's he runs the biggest fucking tournament, the LA Poker Classic, and he basically confirmed that um, 
you know they don't make money on that at the at at the commerce they make money on well, people all, that okay so i'll take i'll take that fine i'll accept that premise but right. then that's all the more reason to make sure we're coming back and happy you've established this business model where the loss leader leads to a lot of ancillary profits so uh that means all you really need to do is make sure we're happy um, right uh, it's like, and, and I think, and that's it, it's part of cementing a culture, and right. just like it's bringing tens of thousands of people into a place for a specific reason, and those people deserve respect. And right, deserve I agree. I hundred percent agree. To, to not feel they're being gouged all the time, left and right, and certainly to not feel that they're, you know, they're requests for game integrity are like frivolous. It's like poker players do love to complain, but. You know, when there's legitimate complaints, it would be, you know, it's necessary to acknowledge them in an efficient way. And like, So uh, Shane, Shane, you know, Shane, I, you're talking right now, believe it or not, a lot of tournament directors listen to this podcast. They, they follow you on Twitter. They follow me on Twitter. You got their ear right now. Give them a give them a little PowerPoint, a three a three item or whatever. I don't, I'm not gonna fucking box you in. Give us a little fucking PowerPoint. If you were on the players' directory or whatever the fuck you call it, what do you right now? What do you want them to do? I okay. I, I guess just focus on the sort of service and hospitality aspect of it a little more, in the sense that little things go a long way, and that can be like I, I really mean like little banal things like a charge charging stations or you know, like, uh, sufficient water and drink service or like, you know, like, like, you know, and it, like just to get all American games to be allowed to operate in the Rio took years, um, to have a little bit more of a porous system that allows user friendliness. Like at the commerce, you cannot bring outside food in. Right. Like that's, yeah, now that's maybe a bad example. I don't know, especially well, it's not really. Not that they're charging for food. That's bullshit. Right. Um, in other words, we're we're willing to put up with a lot of bullshit. Right. When it comes to it, I think we want to be treated like customers and like good customers, because everywhere else you go in the world nowadays, people do treat you like a good customer. They they know well, I mean, that you could be. Huh. Poker mentor, you have something to add? Yeah, this isn't Poker Mentor. This is uh, Joey Bag of Donuts over here. Hey, Joey Bag of Donuts, what do you have to add? No, no, I just want to say, and, you know, I had one other point to bring up, but relative to what Shane is talking about, let's be real here. The average poker tournament player is not hip to the casino game. Their idea of money is not the casino's idea of money. The casino makes a million dollars in the night, and they feel like they lost $10 million they should have made on slots instead. And uh, you know what? Poker players are never going to get treated with respect until tournaments have nothing to do with casinos, period. Because casinos do not look at the tournament business as a whole business. They're renting those tables at $200 an hour, whatever minimal rate they make. And to them, that's not enough because they can make $1,000 an hour with slot machines. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, Joey that's Bag fine. of Donuts yeah. in the house. I love but it. Joey, M- Mr. Bag of Donuts, the point being, <laughs> um, they, they, they can preserve that reality. Um, and I think the best way for them to preserve that reality, they're fine. Poker tournaments are a loss, blah, blah, blah. Um, is to pretend that we're still important. It's not going to work in their advantage to like aggressively display the fact that we don't matter to them. That's not right. going to help. Like, well, I'm, I'm a poker player too, so I agree with you. But you right. know what? So like, <laughs> the the reality of, of the way that they think is never going to change. And, uh, you know, you get a thousand people on Twitter saying, well, these cards are too thin. And the average casino, casino executive doesn't see that on their dashboard in the morning. They they see that they, that they only rake, you know, the minimum on the tournament game and, and and they don't they don't even get to yeah. see they don't even get to see how many of those people actually gambled in their casino. I mean, you got poker players going to tournaments bringing peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in their book bags. That's Trust true. Me, that is that is not, true. <laughs> they are not the the cash cow for the casino industry. <laughs> Look, I get it. I, I do get that. I get that. But it, again, it's just to me. In, in my opinion, there's a possibility that if they live out that attitude too too thoroughly, that It'll come back to backfire where just like 
if enough people yeah, well, that's why message. that's why Caesars is going out of business because the casino industry is short sighted, greedy, and they don't understand poker. They never have. And, uh, you know, they bought the World Series of Poker because of a TV thing, because of a marketing thing. They right. didn't buy it because they care about poker. Right, you I know? agree. To them, you know what? If they're not making $100 million off of XYZ game, that game is not even discussed in the boardroom. Hey, you know what? I, 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 I believe you. Joey, I, mean, I, I, agree. I agree with the thrust of what you're saying. So. Um, God bless America. Uh, yeah. <laughs> No, um, I think I, you're, you're a good interviewer, a good radio personality, so I thank you very much for your time. Um, uh, you fuck around with me on Twitter, anyone who wants. Uh, I'm going to start a new podcast myself called The Straight Story, S-T-R-8 Story, The Straight Story with an 8. Uh, that'll be coming out sometime in the next month, hopefully. Um, I, on my old podcast is Dope Stories. And yeah. Uh, hopefully it'll be a fun summer. Well, thank you very much, Shane. I thank you a lot for coming on. I feel like uh, uh, you, you have a lot of, of strong opinions, and I feel like you backed them up very well, and uh, I, I feel like you did yourself proud here. So, uh, well, thank you. I, I really appreciate the conversation, and I, I like to be challenged, and I can, I'm, I'm capable of changing my mind. I don't. Well, I hope you come on so, again. You'll get nothing but challenges here because you're talking to poker players, and if you know anything about poker players, they are going to challenge you. Absolutely, and I hope you come on the straight story when I when I launch it. We'll get in touch. If you if you start a podcast, I'm there with fucking bells on, brother. All right. Word up. All right, we'll play some good music and stuff. All right, dude. Good luck. Thank you very much for having me. I really do appreciate it. All right, talk to you later, Shane. Bye bye. All right, and. Uh... 